Okay, let's go ahead and get started, folks. Normally, I don't say this first thing in the morning, but happy TGIF. And uh, Friday is not my favorite day of the week, mostly because I'm burned out with everything that's happened in the week. But um, hey, I get to paint first thing in the morning, so not so bad. Not so bad. And then there's a rumor going out that we may not have to be at work a full day, so we will see. Maybe we can paint in the evening too. We need to, because there's a lot more to paint. <laughs> Anyways, happy July to everybody. That make the, that make it the year's almost half, is half over? Something like that, close like it. Probably within a day or two of being the full half half of the year. Okay. So we went ahead and woke up an hour earlier than we normally do. So that gives me some time to paint in the mornings. And uh, let me just take a look and see that everything is operating as it should. All right, we're good on volume. Just need some viewers, awesome. Okay. Um, right. Time to do a shirt. Time to paint his shirt. And just like yesterday, eventually some folks showed up. So I'm not just sitting here talking to myself, which is okay as long as um, I don't run out of things to talk about. This is just the alternative to listening to say something like uh, a podcast or something or an audible playlist or something like that. Not extremely happy with what I'm listening on audible right now. Um, I finished up um, an excellent book on the Diodoki, Diadoki, Theothoa, Theothoa, Theothoa. Anyways, Alexander's successors. Called The Ghost on the Throne. And uh, it's a great book, except that it cuts off too soon. It, um, but thoroughly enjoyed that one. And... I think it's my third or fourth sub book on the subject. I think I'm about prepared to actually read an, an actual book. So I wanted to do this on purpose so that I kind of have basic knowledge or more than basic knowledge of who's who. And as I found myself, I was getting confused with a couple of the guys. And, um, and now after listening to it from different authors. Um, I've got a pretty good grasp of who's who. And, um, because I definitely see some of those armies in my future. Alexander's successors. Doesn't count, Pyrrhus doesn't count. Pyrrhus is too late. Uh, he definitely would be my favorite one. I don't know. After reading every, after reading a, um, several books on it, I, I don't know that I have a favorite one. Um, I don't know that I have a favorite one. I got a couple guys I don't really care for. I don't really care for Ptolemy. 
Um, seems kind of like a kind of like a weenus going and grabbing the body, and he likes to inbreed a lot. I'm not a fan of either one of those two things. A body grabbing inbreeder. <laughs> Even though that's the army that I have. I have a Ptolemaic army. So, had I known that, I got them because they were a littoral successor army. They may have been my first littoral army, actually, now that I think about it. I think I only have two. Them and the medieval Norwegians. Um... Really kind of felt sorry for Eumenes. He seemed like the good guy in the whole thing. If there's anybody who had, who, who was uh, definitely in the, in the right, or maybe had his heart in the better place, I'd say it was him. And um, I don't know if that counts as me liking him, but he's certainly the most... Um, He's certainly the one that was uh, the least dickish. But he got backstabbed by lots of folks. Don't be a Greek in a Macedonian world. couple of them, I wondered why they even made an army list for them. Because they were kind of really small players. Uh, Polly Percon in particular. I thought he was a bigger, more prominent person than what seems to be his book. And, and an older guy, too. Older guy meaning like 70. Not quite Antipater, but... Up there. But yeah, it doesn't even get into the Seleucid stuff. So it's definitely, a, the book is definitely early successors. And I have to look at, I'd have to look at my notes that I didn't take, but I think it just covers the first and the second war, not the third and fourth. So you don't even get Demetrius as a, the crazy stuff that he did. Welcome Ian. Good morning to you. Happy Friday. Happy July. The month named after Julius Caesar, right? So it was interesting. It, it's it's definitely interesting subject matter. Once you wrap around who's who, you know, and it would be even better if there was like statues made of each one of them. But that's kind of few and far between. A couple of them have some coins, and then some folks you just don't even have a clue what they look like. So. But there's some interesting characters. I would say more, well, there's just not a whole lot of information as opposed to say somebody like Alexander. I'm not really a fan of Alexander. I'm just saying there's a lot of things about Alexander I don't care about. Uh, I don't really care that he had that whole, he thought he was the son of a god bullshit going on. And he wanted to go visit the guy that was a, Want to get buried in that place out in the middle of the desert and I don't know maybe I can't relate to megalomaniacs very well 
Too many guys starting with the names of A. Of the successors? Yeah, I used to get, you know, you know, there's there's names that, that look similar, similar-ish, you know, and, and I'm famous, not, not famous, because that sounds like everybody knows who I am for this, but um, there's, na there's names that I get mixed up, even though they're definitely different, and I'll give you an example. Um, when I used to do a lot of World War II uh, gaming, I'm a big fan of uh, British ships, um, especially in World War II. Um, because of the cool paint schemes and the millions of different classes and they're everywhere and somewhat. There's two cruisers that I always get mixed up and I get them mixed up from the standpoint of like if you hear one, you have to give yourself a second and think, oh, that's this one as opposed to that one. Uh, and the names aren't similar, but they are to me. Um, and that is Belfast and uh, Sheffield. And I don't know, maybe they both have S's in them. Um, and you know, they both survived the war and they were both in some important battles, Sheffield more than Belfast a little bit, but you know, and they, I, I'm in ship nut, so I know the difference between them. You know, Belfast is its own class with Edinburgh and, uh, Sheffield, I believe is a town one. So, um, I guess. Belfast would be considered a town three. Um, but anyhow, I would always get those names mixed up. Not from the standpoint of confusion, but you know, I have to give myself a second and think. It's not like an automatic go to something else. And there's other, there's other, you know, there's other names like that. But with the successors, before I started getting deep into it, I'm like, okay, who's Craterus? Um, who's Antipater? And, you know, Craterus in the whole game scheme of things he's basically in and out in a moment he's the only guy that is on the scene less than craterus well you know perdicus isn't around very long um leonidas is in and out he goes to one battle gets ambushed game over um the taller better looking alexander as it said in one of the books which i always liked that one the taller better better looking alexander i didn't realize that alexander was shortish well that would explain why he wanted to take over the world doesn't it? <laughs> I just want to leave people alone. Um, but yeah, Leonidas didn't last very long. Craterus lasted almost nearly not as long. And then Perdiccas was the third one to go. Um, Perdiccas would have benefited. Perdiccas' army would have benefited from knowing that Eumenes had, had accidentally... Um, killed Craterus. That wasn't his intention. There really wasn't any bad blood between the two. But since the word didn't get back until I think the next day after Perdiccas was murdered by his own troops, um, that may have made a difference for him. But Perdiccas was one of those guys that he made all the wrong decisions at the wrong time. And uh, timing is everything. And Perdiccas did not have it. Or as they said in the book, Perdiccas. I have a hard time calling him that, but we have all have our favorite pronunciation. Like I have a hard time saying Antiochus, and it's probably the correct pronunciation because nobody argues that the name of the city is Antioch. There's no other way to pronounce it, you know. So if the city is Antioch, then the person is named after it has to be Antiochus. But I've always looked at the looked at it and go, oh, that's Antiochus. So maybe I've just said it wrong the whole time. But I don't want to pronounce things incorrectly. It just happens sometimes. I can tell the difference between Sheffield and Belfast because I've only been aboard one of them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they both... Um, Sheffield was really... I'm a big Mediterranean... World War Two, and, and she was all over the. She was there all the time. She was definitely a um, a member of Cunningham, not Cunningham, uh, Somerville's Force H for a long time. And um, yeah, 
So there's words like that that, you know, kind of have to take a double take. Because I kind of lump them together in the same category. Yeah, all those, all those battleships the Royal Navy had and they didn't keep them. That's such a shame, but it's are expensive, you know, I'm sure. Like, what do they got, the Victory? I, I don't care about getting going on the Victory, ever. But I'm not the sailing ship person, you know? And all those ships of the Napoleonic period, to me, to an untrained eye, they all look the same to me. I mean, obviously, the number of guns they have and number of mass, but... With all things being equal, you know, the victory looks the same as, you know, a French ship that's 112 guns or something like that, you know, um, of the number of guns. Um, but that's an untrained eye thing. Like I was commenting on one of my, one of my feeds the other day is that there was um, the, I came across... Something I was reading about these guys, the Byzantines, and they said that the horse that these guys used is a horse called a Nicaean. Um, N I S, not C, not like the Nicaean Creed, but uh, a Nicaean, and it's an extinct horse variety. And when I think of extinct horses, I'm thinking of, you know, something from the time period of, you know, cavemen or something like that. You know, one of those horses. Horse breeds that's zebra-like or like a step pony, not a normal-looking horse that just happens to be another breed as opposed to an Arabian or a thoroughbred or, you know, um, any of those. And I am completely ignorant when it comes to horse breeds. You know, I can't tell an Arabian away from, you know. So these miniatures would probably drive somebody crazy who is a horse nut because they'd probably be like, well, that's the wrong that they don't use those Arabian horses and you know such and such army that they came with, and it would just drive them up the wall probably. And I just I don't know the difference between horses. To be honest with you, a step pony and a, and a regular horse, absolutely. But short of that, I, I don't know anything about them. They all look the same to me. And what's even crazier is you would think, oh, okay, well Arabian horses are like sandy colored, or maybe they're the ones that are black or a certain kind. Nope, the coat color doesn't have much to do with with this with the type of horse so just throw logic out the door and um <laughs> i don't uh, i can't tell them apart from each other i can't tell them apart from each other as a matter of fact there's a video game i used to play called red dead redemption it's a western game and you can buy a horse and you can buy a horse of different breeds it's almost like picking out you want a ford or a chevy kind of thing and they all look the same to me i mean sure they've got different like you know speed and handling characteristics you know in, with things that are important in the game supposedly you know hokey stuff that they add them in there and make them different but i can't tell them apart from each other you know it's not like you're comparing a zebra to a horse or you know a step pony to a horse but um I am the wrong person for that. <laughs> Mr. Wolf, welcome. Okay, now there's two people on here. I'll go ahead and mention it. <laughs> so we shot a video last night. Uh, this guy that sent me one of the scenarios sent me another scenario right on top of the last one. I was like, hey, listen, um, I want to do them all, but we've got to, um, you know, we got to do them one at a time. And the particular scenario he sent me is actually a battle between the Lusitanians and the Romans. It's actually a, an, an ambush. It's, a, it's a, a Roman ambush. Is that the correct way to say it, or is it a Lusitanian ambush? Anyways, the Romans get ambushed. The Romans get ambushed in um, fighting the Lusitanians. And um, 
we filmed that last night with Joe, and uh, Joe came over to the house, so um, it was a nice and I was able to take a shower before I gamed, because it's nice and cool here, but um, we played it twice, and it's a deceptively simple scenario. Uh, if you look at the scenario right up, it looks like it would be boring, and it wasn't boring. Um, we played it twice, and... Um, I uploaded it last night, but didn't. Um, I didn't finish doing the details. Well, it's once you upload a video, you have to wait for it to be processed by YouTube in high definition, or people are going to view it in a very crappily. It's going to be very bad graphics. So you know, I usually let that happen overnight, and then I wake up in the morning and add all the details and stuff. So. It's ready there for your viewing pleasure whenever you guys want to take a look at it, if that's something that you're interested in. But I was actually surprised how fun the scenario is. And it is a scenario that basically starts with combat immediately. So, um, but check that out if you're inclined to. My interest in Napoleonic naval warfare largely stems from visiting HMS Victor when you were 10. You don't find that the ships are the same? And I painted it a 1200 scale ship, so. Yeah. I, I, I just think they all look the same, you know. They just, I find it boring. And I have played one. I have played that Wooden Ships and Iron Man, and I think Wooden Ships and Iron Man is a decent game, but it's totally about crew quality. So it's like, you know, the Americans are going to beat the British, who are going to beat the French, who are, you know, the Spanish are just abysmally bad. Um, I think the only way the Spanish wouldn't be, would have a, you know, would have a chance is if they fought somebody who was even, you know, worse than them. Like, you know, the Turk. I don't know if the Turks had... Th those type of ships at the time they, they probably did they were just probably behind a little bit but you know somebody like the Russians or somebody like that so it's all about troop quality so and as much as I wouldn't hate playing American War of Independence I don't want to do American War of Independence on the high seas I just think it's well, for starters, you know, the biggest ship that was here was, what, the Constitution is, I think, a, what, a 44-gunner? So, it'd be like playing a war where nobody's got anything larger than a cruiser, you know, in a land where people have battleships. It's like, you know, you're not playing with a full deck, regardless how badass that ship was supposed to be, but... Uh, I think I need, I'm going to need to get an intermediate one because I don't want to waste this one on, that I'm using for faces on this. Let's see if we can bring this one up to, there. Yeah, they should have kept War Spite. They should have kept HMS War Spite. I would say the Rodney because it's my favorite battle wagon, but. War Spite was everywhere, too. Including at Windy Corner. Just for that reason alone, you should put War Spite in there. The plan is to see a battleship on the way to Historicon, but we'll see if that pans out. I'm I'm skeptical about everything in this in this uh, in this time after COVID, when things just got shut down right in front of your face. I, I'm I'm skeptical to get excited about anything in particular. So. Why not go up there and the website will say, oh, they're open on this day. And, oh, no, we, 
we close all Tuesdays in, in July or some shit like that. And like weird stuff, like, you know, it's, it's a two day trip to Historicon for us to get up there. Um, on the way there, on the way back, we can get back on one day, but on the way there, and mostly because we got to go around Washington, D.C. and Baltimore, both of which are traffic ridden. And based on leaving here at a decent time, it's going to put us around both metro areas at rush hour traffic in the afternoon. So that's a no-no. So because of that, we've got to go the day before. So if we're going the day before, we might as well hit something along the way. We've gone to Gettysburg. Uh, we went to Fredericksburg one time, you know, both of which were kind of neat, except I just, I do not like the American Civil War at all. I, I, I'd be hard pressed to find a conflict that I care less about. But, um, so I wanted to do is hit one of those. I wanted to hit Aberdeen Proving Grounds, but Aberdeen Proving Grounds was, um, was shut down. Aberdeen Proving Grounds where they had all those, I don't know, they had about 200 tanks from World War II and stuff, captured tanks, and they're moving them, and they haven't relocated them yet. So there's actually a private collection in this place called Danville, Virginia, that has a ton of World War II armor. And, uh, but they're only open on Fridays and Saturdays, like nine to two or some shit like that. I'm like, well, that's not going to work with our trip, you know, cause we got to go through there on a Tuesday. You played a lot of wooden ships and Ironmen back in the seventies. It's much more interesting if we downgrade the British to average crew quality. We had no money to preserve battleships after World War II. Yeah. So you asked to borrow some. And then we have a bunch here, and they're all the same. Like, we've got Alabama and Massachusetts. They're the same freaking ship. Um, not really. I think Massachusetts, they built her with one secondary turret less per side. But it's the same freaking ship. And then North Carolina. That's the one we're supposed to see. Um, I've been on the Alabama, but I haven't been on the North Carolina. And then what they do? They kept uh, Missouri in Pearl Harbor, New Jersey's in New Jersey, right across from Philadelphia. And that's it. What? The Texas too, right? And the Texas is in bad shape. I don't think it's open to the public. They're restoring it. Because I think it was built in 1910. So it's... Um, So anyways, would have been nice to go to one of those armor museums and pick at all the stuff that's wrong on them. They didn't have that tow hook on there. They added that after the war so they could, you know, some shit like that. Britain was effectively bankrupt after the war. Food rationing didn't fully end until 1954. Well, that sucks. I'll be honest with you, I don't know I don't know much about. So the Suez crisis was almost you just gotten out of that. What was ra what was rationed in nineteen fifty four or, or nineteen fifty three? 
Isn't the Iowa still afloat? I don't know. I think so. If you're going to scrap one, that's the one to scrap, man. I remember when that magazine explosion happened on the on Turret B. I think it was Turret B. That's bad. You do not want to be on a ship with a magazine explosion. A controlled magazine explosion. Boys at my store have been gearing up for some naval, but they're doing Black Seas. It's just that it's taken so long to complete the ship with rigging. I, I rigged one ship in one 1200 scale and I'm never doing it again. I invented some new curse words while I was doing it too. Um, I don't know why there's a fascination with pirates. I just don't get it. Um, I've never had it. But isn't Black Sea? Well, maybe it isn't. I'm thinking Black Sails. But that in between period. If I had to do sailing vessels, I would do 1500s. Because then you've got, um, you can do, you know, some sailing ships and you can do, um, you could do uh, galleys and, but still, I mean, how different is a Turkish galley versus a Venetian galley? I mean, sure, they have different flags and everything, but <clears throat> do their miniatures reflect that? The problem with those sailing ship games is mechanics. Um, and it used to happen. I don't remember if wooden ships and iron men had this problem. I bet it did. Although it didn't seem like it was very prevalent in it. But there's this American Civil War game I played not that long ago. Meaning within the last 10 years. Mitch and I ended up playing. We both wanted to play Confederates mainly because, you know, I wanted to make funny voices. Uh, that was the whole point in me playing stuff. Uh, Mr. Dirk, welcome. Good evening, I think. Morning, something. Um, I was in L.A.? Okay. Um, so the one they said, screw you, was Wisconsin. Well, Wisconsin was the last one to, um, to be in service. Um... Anyhow, I, I never really cared for the Iowa-class battleships because they kind of entered service too late to be useful in, in scenarios. But they are beautiful ships, um, nice and long. So, um, But I, don't, I think I had one when I was doing naval. I, I don't think I even used it. It's just, you know, after Guadalcanal, there's no point in doing stuff in the Pacific as far as I'm concerned. You know, aircraft battles with ships, that's not what ships are for, you know. That's the, the anti-battleship thing. For those of us that want to see the the battleships fight it out, that's that's not what we're there for. Like I've said before, war gamers aren't practical. We just wanna see we just wanna see stuff. I think buff is what we used for the lance. Mm. Well, it's going to be close enough. It's going to be close enough. I need to get, I need to go get a Coke because I'm, I've been talking. I'm not even going to pause it. I'll be right back in a moment, literally. Compared to DVA, I haven't done anything for any length of time, but we played hundreds of naval engagements, and you don't want to be anywhere on a ship in a magazine explosion. It's like sitting on the side of a volcano, literally, towards the top, too. Your 
Remember public outcry when they were going to sell Missouri to Japan for scrap metal? Really? That's dumb as shit. Why would you do that? Mm. I don't remember that. But, I mean, it didn't happen. Just don't remember it. I kind of steer away from the media. The media wants me to listen to this and I'll go in a different direction. They did it to themselves. Stop crying wolf about everything. Yeah, I don't remember that. <clears throat> drippings that were in there were old. So rumor has it, we're not going to be at work a full day. We'll see. That, that may mean, hey, we're there till four. Gee. But uh, if I get back early enough, we'll definitely paint in the, after, in the afternoon. Almost certainly going to paint in the evening or attempt to. We need to get these, uh, we need to get these boys done. And I had this false idea that I was going to be able to get so much more stuff done while the wife was away for five days, but it didn't happen. One of the things I hadn't counted on was that there's a couple things I needed to take care of that involve going to a store after work. And these store hours are ridiculously stupid now. You know, all these places that were open until 9 close like at 7.38. And you don't think that makes that much of a difference. But if you're trying to go to the gym first and then go to these places, yeah, you don't have time to do everything. And then, you know, work till you don't get home until 5.30 and you need to eat something. Yeah, you just run out of time so you literally can't get shit done Monday through Friday. You need the weekend to get it done. So. No big deal. I just, um, I thought I was going to do be able to do A, B, C, and D. And um, I thought for sure I'd get these three figures done and probably the next set. But there I go being optimistic. But I'm not worried about it. I just like to get these guys done just so I can not have to work on these guys when I get back from Historicon. I could start something new. So, looks like that's probably not going to be able to be the case. Oh, well. So anyways, when you guys get a chance, check out that battle video we did last night. Lusitanians versus Romans. I looked at the scenario and I'm like, well, this looks awfully simple. But as happens many times, you start, look, you start playing it in practice. And there's a lot of different options that you have. Lots of different ways to skin a cat. So... That was a pleasant surprise. But I'm definitely enjoying those type of scenarios more than the I bring my army, you bring yours kind of thing. 
tournament setting. There's going to be enough tournament settings that we're going to play throughout the year. It's just nice to have some scenarios to go along with it. And that way you can play both sides. You you can help your since you're not since I'm not keeping keep, keeping skeeping since I'm not keeping score. Um, you know, I, I, you can you can say, hey, why don't you do this? You know, you can see things too. You just saw a documentary about that, about the um, scrapping. Never been to Pearl Harbor. It's just too far away. It's just too far away. And somebody just told me that Hawaii is more expensive. It's more expensive to go to Hawaii than Europe, flight-wise. No, Hawaii's farther away. Romans wanted to punish them for helping Hannibal. Oh, you're talking about the scenario that? Well, they took their sweet time in freaking punishing them. Um, scenario play best for war games, pitch battles, or more for tournaments. I am not a tournament player. The only reason I play tournaments is it's an opportunity for me to, to, to play with the things that I just painted and use them not be like well we don't need those troops we're going to play the scenario with these other ones that i painted well i don't want to play with the ones you painted i'm the whole point i'm doing is painting them so that i have troops to play with so it's a way to play with your own troops <clears throat> and also the last convention i went to before doing dba well that's not that's not exactly accurate in 1996, I ran a game at a convention back when we were doing naval. And the whole time, and I supplied all the ships, and the whole time I'm stressed out about this guy who I don't know be playing at a convention with my figures, and he's being all ham fisted about grabbing him and stuff. And I'm like, I'm not, I'm not going to do this anymore. I'm not supplying ship for people. And. I didn't go to a convention for probably six years. And then when I did, I, I didn't put on any games. Um, and just left such a sour taste in my mouth. Um, and then when DBA came along, I'm like, oh... So I'm going to play this game where I use my troops and more than likely no one will touch them other than me. Okay, we can do that. And that's why it's clicked. That's really why I do this. You know. Not because I'm into tournaments or stuff like that. I just want my troops to look good painted. How they do in battle, I mean, yeah, I like to keep score just so you can remember, but it's not that big of a deal. You know, after you've lost over a thousand games, it's not important. A thousand? No, let me not sell myself short. 900. Over 900 games. I think I've lost 940 or something like that. I will lose a thousand eventually. But I'm not a I'm not a win at all cost tournament type person. I, like I said, I've never I've never played a tournament anything prior to this. It's just a an opportunity to play with your your little guys and nobody's grabbing them just by the you know just damaging them whatever. And the thing that doesn't make any sense to me, well, it does, but not on, on face value. But what doesn't make, any, doesn't make any sense on face value is that 
This is the only game, DBA is the only game I've ever played in a tournament. So it's the only game that's uncompetitive, so to speak. But while playing it, you have the best attitude from other players. And I think it's because everybody's just interacted. You know, you're not bored. You're not, the games don't go on forever. Um, everybody still has a chance to win. Even towards the bitter end, you could come back. Um, you're not reaching over a table. Uh, you're not playing an unwinning, unwinnable situation for another three hours just because the game's not over. You know, if you get your ass beat in about 50 minutes, it's time to, it's about time to try again with somebody else, you know. So. So a lot of people get turned off by the fact that it's, you know, oh, it's tournament. Uh, I don't want to play a tournament. Well. I've had a better experience playing tournament stuff than a regular game. And you don't spend an hour explaining the rules to people that are never going to come back and play another game. You know, and I understand you have to do that to recruit people, but you know, after I've done it a couple of times, I'm a quick learner. Somebody said one time, hey, you should do a how-to-play DBA face-to-face -face scenario. Uh, it's not scenario, but a play session. So I did that once. It was in, I want to say it was in April 2009 at one of the shows. In our local shows, you don't get a break for putting on games. So you still have to stay in the hotel, and you still, the price of admission is the same thing as if you don't put any games in. So... It's not like I want to sit there and put a whole bunch of games on because I'm not gaming or whatever. But I'm like, all right, I'll do, I'll do this one time. One person came by. I gave up four hours. One person came by and they dropped their kid off. And their kid was like, I don't know, 11 years old or something like that. The kid didn't want to watch his kid. The, the, the dad didn't want to watch his kid and dropped him off for me to babysit him. And the kid didn't want to be there. And I'm like, okay, never doing this again. I only get, you only get to burn me once. So. I think because most DBA gamers are older. So more nice. Um, everybody I've gamed with has either been my age or ten year, about 10 years older than I am. So. I think it depends on players as well. There's a great group of peeps at my local hobby store, the Game Depot. Yeah, the game stores here don't do anything historical. And, you know, the people I've seen play games, I'm like, I don't want to game with those guys. Those guys aren't having any fun. Or they smell bad. You know, it's all right to be geeky. It's not like, oh, those guys aren't cool enough to play with. I don't care about that. But you don't need to smell, you know. <laughs> That's unacceptable. They make deodorant in everybody's size, you know. Gives a chance to play people from out of town. Yeah, well, you don't have to spend a time, you know, explaining the rules, hopefully. You could just start rolling dice. You can start creating narrative. That's the word that I need to remember. I always forget what that word is. I always think of, yeah, I want a game that has a good, and I can't think of narrative. I've only had maybe three people I don't ever want to play again. Out of, it's not fair to say 2,000 games because a thousand of them were with Mitch, or nearly a thousand of them were with Mitch, but I think I did a count 150 people, 120, something like that. 120 different people have played or so. Uh, a couple of them only once because, you know, they never showed up again because it was a, you know, big con or something like that. And only three I don't ever want to play again. They either played too loose or were a dick or both. 
So that's not bad. That's not bad odds. And the problem with want, not wanting to play somebody in a tournament is that, for the most part, is the hypocrisy. You know, like for instance, you know, you got to move your stuff really precise. And then when the other guy moves his stuff, he just kind of like, yeah, it's about that far distance. Like, you know, you, you're either, you need to be consistent, you know, or you're just, you're dishonoring everyone. I, I am no nonsense when it comes to honor. I'm not playing with no cheating bastard. You'll bring shame on your family. Good opponent is the guy that tries to point out when you're making a bad move. Um. Okay. I don't care about that much so much. Just just be honorable. And be verbal about what your intentions are when you're moving and it makes it a lot easier. Like, okay, I moved and look, I'm just outside the distance to be able to close the door on them. Just be verbal about what you're doing and you don't have any you don't have any problems. A good opponent is someone who doesn't throw the dice when they're angry. I've had that happen before. I had somebody throw dice all the way across the room. And then I did the only respectable thing I could have done. I went and found that die and used it against him and beat him. <laughs> As I piss on superstition. Die doesn't get a day off just because it wants to roll low. Roll badly. can't stand people that are superstitious. It just it drives me crazy. I'm not saying I, I'm going to burn churches down or something like that. Oh, there is karma. Whether or not you believe it or not, <laughs> there's definitely karma. I'm just talking about superstitious. You know, the people that are like, oh, we're going to watch my favorite team play in a, in, in a tournament. Well, what are you going to do? Oh, we're going to eat the same thing that we ate last time. We're going to wear the same clothes that we did that kind of bullshit is just like okay all right i don't fall for that stuff i definitely believe in the don't be doing the wrong stuff or it's going to come back and bite you I don't know if it's a, I don't know if I believe in that. It's just, that's the right thing to do. <laughs> Nobody should have to tell you that. Didn't you have parents? My dice always roll poorly at tournaments. Oh, they've run, they've rolled good once. I've had bad die rolling, but I still would have to say, my perception is I cannot roll anybody. I have confidence in my die rolling. But yeah, they roll like shit sometimes and hey, I've got it on video to prove it. But but I'm not anti-dice. I like dice.
I actually had a game. I was playing a Flames of War. Yes, I actually played a Flames of War game. Um, two, I think. The Don was actually running. And I forget who the hell I was using, but I was faced off against somebody else. And the guy had bought some new dice. He'd bought a cube of them, and they were pink dice that were marbled, like pink marbled dice. And he was using them, and he was having the worst luck with them. And, you know, and he said, oh, man, these dice are terrible. These dice are terrible. Just regular D6s. So I'm like, there's nothing wrong with the dice. Let me use them. So I was faced off against him. And they were great for me, so much that I beat him. And at the end of the game, he just gave me the whole cube. <laughs> He's like, <laughs> I'm like, okay. Have you ever seen an average die? I am. I have. They just seem. They seem dirty. It just seems dirty. And I've seen what those character character builder dice or something like that, where they predominantly roll sixes or they roll sixes all the time or something like that. That's just. That's a slippery slope. If you have some of those, man, you've got to like, you got to keep them like they got monkey pox or something like that. You got to keep them away from, uh, I got to throw in the monkey pox in there. Uh, like they they got some contamination from everything else because, you know, one of them works its way into the rest of your dice and then, you know, you end up using it by accident and then, um, you know, I don't need any, any cheaty dice, you know. And the average dice, yeah, they're not cheaty, but they're weird. You don't want to end up using one of those. I'm like, why is there two fives on that die and two twos? Oh, shit. Because believe it or not, if you use the die that had no ones, yeah, you could. Um... I don't think I'd like average dice. See, I come from a background of using percentile. So when I started playing this D6 game, what do you mean there's only six things I can roll? I'm used to a hundred things I can roll. This seems pretty goofy. I've just kind of accepted that that's how it is now, but I'm still a percentile guy at heart. I like decimal stuff and it's easy to explain like, okay, you gotta roll under a 32. Well, what are the, what are the odds of me rolling successfully? Hmm, 32%, you know, so I've got that um, built into me. When we used to play naval warfare, that, our naval game, that was a percentile game. Um, World War II skirmish, that's a percentile game. You know, only when we played advanced squad leader, it's the bell curve 2d6, which I really dislike 2d6. Two threes and two fours. See, I don't know anything about it. I thought it was two twos and two fives. So two threes, two fours, um, a two and a five, I take it then. Yes. Yeah, not for me. I've never played a game where that gets used. There's a group of guys I don't get together with them because they don't play war games. I'm fine with board games. I just want to play war games. I'm a pacif I'm a devout pacifist every day. Why do I want to play pacifist shit? I want to take over the world and commit genocide and stuff like that on the tabletop. Um, <laughs> I don't want to do it in real life. <laughs> but um, these guys don't play historical stuff. And a few of them really don't like dice. They like card randomizing things. And I don't care how bad your die is. I mean, unless you have a cheating dice, um, you're going to get a better randomizing mix than shuffling card deck together. Um, and it might be because I am a horrendous shuffler. Um, I've even watched videos on how to get better. I don't have that school. I don't have that skill set to get better in shuffling cards. Um, I hate shuffling cards. It's like uh, doing dishes, except doing dishes is more fun. So,
Regulars use the average dice in combat. So regulars couldn't get a six, but irregulars could. It's been a long day, off to bed, no pain for me tonight. Okay. Well, maybe we'll see you tomorrow morning. Which means it would be my evening tonight. Thanks for stopping by, Dirk. Go get you some rest. I haven't gotten any rest the last couple days, so not much. No rest for the painters with a with a schedule. I don't think he works weekends, so the good news is, yeah, you got to go to rest, but then you get, it's Saturday when you wake up. Which is a day off for many people, but not if your name is Mitch. Yeah, I don't like card randomizing things at all. I don't mind because of the shuffle aspect. Uh, not necessarily that it's card driven. I just don't think you get a good shuffle. Well, I certainly couldn't do it. I, I just don't trust the shuffling to randomize things properly. They couldn't roll six, but they couldn't roll a one either. I guess, yeah, that could be interesting. I missed all. I missed out on all that WRG stuff because I never played any of it. Nobody around me played it. It's not like I avoided it. It's probably a good thing because. I didn't have to unlearn stuff. So was the writing in WRG stuff as elusive as it is in DBA? Is it all fraught with Barkeries? Oh, yeah. I think the world of Phil Barker, but I'm not playing one of his, another one of his games. It just, it's like penance. Like, what did I do wrong? Why do I got to keep, you know, reading this sentence three times? And I, you know, I may not be the sharpest person in the room, but I'm definitely smarter than the average person. And it just shouldn't be that difficult. I mean, and I've, I play complicated shit and I like to read complicated things. And it's just pain. You know, the wording is the too many thoughts in the same sentence is a problem. But the biggest problem is that you have to hunt to find out where you saw something, you know. Dirty 7th was worse than DBA for Barkeries. Just... I don't think I'm going to play it. I don't think I'm going to learn how to play another rule set. I think I'll just, at that point, I'll make my own. And I got lots of years of playing this to, to realize what works well for us and what doesn't work well. And it will not be difficult to explain. It can be multifaceted and complicated, you know. I mean, I think DBA is really complicated from the standpoint of, you know, there's all kinds of hidden things that you discover as you're playing the game that the game is more um, has more seasoning than you think it does and um, 
That's a shame because I'm sure a lot of people have been turned off because they think it's too simple. But there isn't. There's a lot of like seasoning in there, but it's hard to get through it, you know? So version six was a good game. People wanted more detail. So version seven had more detail, but too much detail. I think DVA could have more detail. Um, it just, you need to be able to conform and make contact to be less, um, less, um, we spent too much time trying to like make legal contact. It just shouldn't be that difficult, you know? It needs to be more like the decisions you make when you move into combat with the enemy should be more like the decisions that the actual commanders had. Like, go ahead and hit that guy there, you know, and hit that guy in the flank. Not like, well, I'm not murky making perfect alliance. That bullshit is just too, um, it's just too complicated. And that's the stuff that's difficult to understand for new players, you know. And I've been a new player, and I've taught a lot of new players. And I can tell you that it needs to be easier to explain to new players because if you need to get more players for the game, every time you bring somebody in, if it's like banging your head into the wall, a brick wall, you know, how often are you going to want to do that? You're like, you know what, I've, I already have a headache. I don't need more of a headache. So... Now, the other extreme is to do something that has a bunch of little squares, but then it doesn't feel like a real battle, you know. Stellar Conquest. Yeah, where you been? Been a while. Hope things are good. I'll be watching your latest playthrough later. Yes, everything's good. I always can find something to complain about, but everything's good. I, actually, I don't, have, I don't have any issues when I'm not at work, so. Painting before a work day. I got another 15 minutes in me. Everything is good. I hope everything's good with you. Everything's good. I don't listen to the media. I don't listen to any media. On either side of the, of the, of the aisle. I just don't. I'm not falling for their tricks. Really the last straw was this whole Ukraine thing. And it got me with it. It's that, that whole I'm like, oh, okay, a war. Let's watch the war, you know. Not because I want there to be a war to happen, but it's like, you know, might as well see some of these just new things in action. And they got me on that whole Snake Island where they came in and they gave them basically the F you, we're not surrendering. And they killed everybody. And then three days later, well, they actually didn't kill anybody. They just took them prisoner. I'm like, I'm out. I'm not watching anything else. You know? I'm like, if you're going to flat out lie to me, then... I don't need to listen to you. I don't listen to propaganda either. I know I know you don't. Been busy at work. Yeah, I know. Yep. When you're busy at work, you just want to go home and lay low. You know? We're not out there protesting and causing problems. I just want to leave people alone. I want to leave people alone. Biden blaming Putin for oil prices. 
Oh, the best one I heard was Biden blaming the Republicans for the pricing, rising price of oil. I've heard everything now. I, I don't listen to the news. They're, they're all liars, you know. Some of them tell you things you want to hear, and some of them tell you things that you hate. But at the end of the day, they're all, they all stand for nothing. Stellar Conquest is an Avalon Hill game. Yeah, it sounds like that. Okay, I think it's time for the boots next. Le boots. Um, where is that color? There we go. Coat the arms. I don't think I played Stellar Conquest. The only Avalon Hill game that I played that was space-based was um, Merchant of Venus. I played that a few times, and I think I enjoyed it. Merchant of Venus. Were Avalon Hill games that much better written than most things now? Or we just we were just stupid, and um, we were just stupid and didn't know any better. Maybe we didn't play, we didn't make videos, and people would pick apart everything we did. So we thought we were playing the games correctly, but in fact, we may not have been. What are we doing? Oh, we're doing um, we're doing uh, Constantinian Byzantines. This is the cavalry. Look at look at look at this little leftover paint. Look at all this paint that's being wasted by getting put over here. So this is the design flaw of these these pots as you folks across the pond like to call them. Which, by the way, is a saying that I, I truly do like, across the pond. I don't mind using that one. I don't use the old country because it's not my old country, damn it. <laughs> it could have been, but you guys got all uppity in 1588. Wait, maybe we were the ones that were uppity. <laughs> I'd like to do one of those ancestor things, but you know what? It's not going to give me the answers that I want. You know, it's going to tell me about shit I'm not interested in. And then a lot of people are like, man, you really don't want to do that because then the government has access to it. I don't give a shit about the government. The government can't even keep a BJ under wraps, you know. But it's just going to be frustrating because, you know, however long it takes to get your results back is going to be like the longest five weeks ever. Um, and, um, you know, when I get it, it's going to tell me things I already know or figured out on my own, you know. So, it's not going to tell me something really cool that I didn't know. You had to go dump tea in a harbor. That's not me, man. My people weren't here. My people weren't here. As far as I know, my ancestors didn't get here. Well, my ancestor didn't get to this country until my dad set foot in 1960. But, you know, as far as I know, my immediate ancestors didn't get to the New World until around 1890. And we went to this tropical island, too. Not, not this land. Why is there not an Afghan army in their book? There is. There is. It's Gurid. And there's lots of, you know, there's, there's lots of armies that are Afghanistan area. Just, you know, there's not one that's called Afghan. But uh, Gurid is a Afghan guy. And I think that's a book, a low book for. 
army. It's an interesting army, actually. And um, there's definitely things that cross over in that. Timurids. Um, Ghaznavid. But no, there's not something called Afghan this, that, or the other. Yeah, they dumped the tea in the harbor because they found out that in the future, the British Empire was going to be one of the top 10 most evil empires in world history. <laughs> we talked about that yesterday. I did a search on it. I'm like, British Empire top 10. What the fuck? What the hell? <laughs> what the hell? It's got to be somebody that came up with that that lives in England and hates the fact that they live there. Well, freaking move. If you hate the country where, you're, where you are, get the hell out of there, you know? I've come across people. It, it's pretty rare, but I have come across people that hate who they are. And what I mean is that, you know, well, there's one guy who used to come on here. I think he said he was part German and part Thai. And he's like, I hate the fact that I'm part German. I'm like, what's that have to do with anything? You know, I mean, the Germans were, you know, Nazi bastards only for a very small portion of all the time thing. And, you know, not everybody was like that way, you know. I mean, I get it. Nobody wants to be a Nazi bastard, but... Um, doesn't mean you are. You don't get to pick who your mom is and you don't get to pick where you're hatched. So, but for the most part, that's not a very common, it's not likely that people hate who they are, you know? Because you don't have any control of it and you can be whoever you want to be. You know, you don't get to pick where you're hatched though. So, yeah, but if you hate a country so bad, get the hell out, you know? We did cause the war that broke the British bank. That's why they taxed us. We did cause the war that broke the British bank. You mean the seven, this, the um, French Indian War? I don't know. I think we're being taxed a hell of a lot more now. And I don't, you know, to be honest with you, I don't really complain about taxes. Okay? Because everybody's got to pay them. I complain about how they're being irresponsibly spent. You know, you ask somebody's like, oh, we need to pay more taxes. Now, wait a second. Prove that you can spend any of it responsibly. You know, I'm not anti-tax per se. I'm anti, you know, you've got a kid that's like, dad, can I have $20? Uh, okay, here's $20, but careful where you spend it. And then five minutes later, they come back, um, dad, I, dad um, I need $40. Well, why do you need 40 Because I spent the 20 and now... Um, I'm in debt another like dude you haven't proved that you're you're responsible spending the money why should I give you more money you're gonna the more money I give you the more responsible you are that's the problem that I have with taxes not taxes per se but you know so I didn't think we we're gonna talk about the government this morning but hey just to prove you never know where we're gonna go here um, you know and then you want to be moralized by people that don't even know how to pay it to to um, to balance a checkbook you know, so you can just talk to the wall because I ain't listening to you. So the only solution is to try to make government as small as possible so that it doesn't um, spend and make decisions. The less decisions it can make, the better. It needs to be around, you know, because if given, you know, if government's there to regulate, not to create jobs and shit like that, in my opinion. 
but that's the whole thing. I'm not anti-taxes. I'm just like, we need to do a tax for the, to fix the roads. Okay, roads need to be fixed. Let's fix the roads. And then, you know, next year, we need taxes for roads. You never fixed them with the money we gave you. Oh, well, we used it for something else. So you're being dishonest. Just be freaking honest, man. I'm not anti-tax. I'm anti-incompetence. And there's lots to go around. <laughs> lots to go around. So, and I think that lots of people that, 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 that make themselves out to be anti-tax are really what I just described. You know, just be responsible with our money, you know. Not anti-tax per se. You're anti-corruption. Absolutely. That's worse than anything. That's absolutely. Um, absolutely. And there's plenty of that to go around from. Well, you wouldn't understand. You're probably not power hungry. I don't understand either. I'm not power hungry. I'm like. You know, I don't feel like I need to control my neighbor, you know, just be respectful to, you know, if your neighbor goes and buys himself something nice, good for him. You know, I don't need to be like, man, that guy's got something nicer than me. We got to bring it, put him down. Why? Yeah. Corruption's bad. Dirty bastard. Like you're cheating at a game. I'm anti-dishonesty. Just say who you are and be that person. Don't pretend to be somebody that you're not. I had a guy, one of his favorite sayings was, I like you for who you are, not the stories that you tell. <laughs> Always remember that. <laughs> well, he wasn't talking about me. He was just talking about in general, you know. Um, but yeah, don't be dishonest. Not familiar with Tribula. Spanish versus Republic. I wasn't familiar with it either. But this guy actually sent me this, um, this scenario. And he says, hey, why don't you guys check this out? And since Joe has the Lusitanians, maybe you could do it with them. And then it's like, I, I couldn't make it to a regular game night. And Joe was going to travel to our town anyways. So I'm like, hey, why don't you just come later on in the week? Come over to my house because you know it's the same town, and we'll um, and we'll do these scenarios that you have to do it. So the the scenario is actually deceptively simple. You look at it and like oh, this doesn't this doesn't look like it's going to be very very good. And and I'll be honest with you, I thought the same thing. I thought it was going to be a bust. I thought it was going to be a total bust on the scenario, and it wasn't. It was pleasantly surprised, which is why. I think I really like this these rules because just when you think something's going to be boring, it isn't, and it it painted a, a pretty it paints a pretty good narrative. Are they perfect? Absolutely not, but um, but they keep getting me motivated to paint other things. So can't be that bad. Can't be that bad. But I haven't had an opportunity of playing, you know, um, stuff like the old WRG games, um, Warhammer's Ancient Battles, all the stuff that I probably would have enjoyed playing with the right folks. You know, with the right folks, everything is as it should be. With the wrong folks, everything's a nightmare, you know. Did you ever decide on his next army? Well, he's finishing up Islamic Persians. 
Um, we have a Persian theme coming up at uh, Huracan. Um, so he's painting that. They're nearly done. And then we'll, of course, have a show off between the Ottoman Turks and find out who the shittiest people from the 1500s in the Middle East is going to be. Um, I have a feeling I'm going to win in having the shittier army, but we'll see. You like ancient Spanish armies. Really? What about them? I like Spanish armies. I don't... I don't know. I, I'm thinking I'm going to build one eventually, but... Warhammer's okay, not really ancients. Okay. Yeah, I'm not a Warhammer player, so the fact that it ties in with other rules that are Warhammery is not a, really an appeal for me, but their books are gorgeous. I mean, their books are just salivatingly gorgeous. I have three or four of them. Um, and they're 28 mil. I don't care. I, I would, you know, if 28 mils didn't take so damn long to paint, you know, I'm not necessarily opposed to them by cost. It's just, or space. I, I live in America. We got lots of space. Um, <laughs> I live in ruralish. I live in suburbia America. We've got, we've got enough space. But um, it's just time, you know. Just time to... These things take... I take long enough painting these things. I don't really need to spend 12 hours on a figure. You change your Islamic Persian army to Timurid. You just picked up Lidless Eye Middle Earth Supplement for 6th edition WRG. I, I keep toying with the idea of... If I ever did fantasy, I'm going to do that Atlantis thing. And um, I just don't, um, I don't see ever doing that. Because the whole point in doing historical stuff is to learn about history and then participate. I don't really want to participate in fantasy. Not, um, not really my, my thing. But that Atlantis theme looks really freaking cool. And it's, it's just, there's enough, there's enough historical and myth in there to, to make it interesting, but I'd probably use the Peter Pig elves for the Atlantean troops and, and just scrape off the symbol on their shields. I don't know. I need to stop talking about it. So I don't, uh, I don't go down that rabbit hole, but, um, I have a Chinese army that I really don't have a use for. I don't want to get rid of them as they nerfed my southern dynasty so bad that I pretty much can't use any of those troops. So I'm like, well, I could have one of the Chinese guys. I think they're called Katai or whatever in that book. So But I wouldn't use hordes of the things. I'd probably make my own thing in it. My heart's not there. If I was say retired Sure, you know, but yeah, I played hot a couple times. It doesn't scratch the itch for me. It's more Barkeries. I'm, I just don't have it in me. I don't have anything really bad to say about Phil other than, you know, why does he torture me so? <laughs> He's a nice guy. You know, one time that I met him, he was a nice guy. He's like a grandfather that I never met. You know, because I didn't meet any of my grandfathers. They never, they never saw their island fall into communism, which I guess maybe is a good thing. Man, I don't want to go to work now, man. I want to keep painting. You guys got my juices flowing. Oh, well, there's worse things, right? There's a lot worse things. That's what we're here for. Mr. Ben, welcome. Did I see that in-depth review of DBA 3.0 that was posted on a few sites? I may have seen one. Um... I saw a review recently. Why did you do it? I saw a review recently. I don't know how, if it was done recently, but I saw it recently in the last week. 
And the first thing I thought of, it was a review, and what stood out about me, uh, what stood out about it was that um, it quoted a lot of different people. Um, it's definitely from somebody who likes to write. I don't like to write at all. I don't mind rambling. I, I don't mind, uh, you know, maybe, you know, making discussion points and talking about them. I just, you know, I don't have more of a college education. Not because I don't want to learn. I just don't want to write shit. I, I, I get writer's block. Um, but this particular review was kind of lengthy. So it may be the same one you're thinking of. And it quoted a lot of people. And the first thing I thought of is, hey, they didn't quote me. Cool. <laughs> I'm glad they didn't quote me because there were tiny little snippets pulled out from different things that people said. And I'm like, I would hate for somebody to pull something out of what I said because, you know, uh, it's linked on Lead Adventure. Saw they use Mom's Grappa scenario to test the rules. Okay, yeah, I saw that review. Uh, I don't know if that I, I looked at it. Phil was interviewed in the last Slingshot. I had subscribed to Slingshot for a year. I didn't think it was of good value. Um, I don't think it was of good value. Yeah, I saw that review, Ben. Um, or I glanced through it, and uh, that's what I was thinking. I'm like, I'm glad they didn't quote me. Um, I don't want somebody to put something in my mouth that I may or may not have said. So, you know, my purpose in doing all this is a, the opposite of what most people's purpose would be. I don't want to be famous. Um, it's just, I want to keep the momentum going about how good these rules are and, and this hobby. That's simply what it is. I, I don't want people to be like, nah, we don't do this anymore because there was no interest in it. So... That was a purpose in doing the games. And then the painting's like, man, I need to stay on topic. How can I do that? Well, let's talk about it. And I don't have anybody throughout the year other than Mitch. And Mitch is not interested in paint, anything painting related to talk to. So it's my, my opportunity to get my, um, my own juices flowing. Well, that sounds not very PG. Um about staying on track and being excited about this hobby. That's the whole purpose, so, you know. Not exactly a motivation for, say, like the Kardashians, is it? But the, the biggest thing that happened that was the best for DBA 3.0 is that they put the rules for print on demand. That was the best thing that happened. So I was expecting you to be mentioned. Nah, I'm glad they didn't mention me. I'm glad they didn't mention me. They, they might have like you know, used a sentence and even not pulled it out of... I, I would have thought like, really? That's what you pulled out for me? Of all the things, of all the interesting things that I can come up with. And, uh, and you mentioned that one thing. So I'm glad they didn't mention me. You know. But it was... I, I was looking at the review and, and they mentioned one person twice... But they mentioned they used their proper name and then they used their handle on, on the Fanatica site. And they were talking about the same person. And I'm like, so whoever wrote this didn't know that they were the same person. But that's, I'm, I'm not a fan of using a different handle. I just go by my own name. I'm, I'm willing to put my name to anything that comes out of my mouth. <laughs> I don't want to be, you know, oh, so you're, you know, Troublemaker uh, 873, you know. Do I have an army you consider your masterpiece or favorite? No, I don't think so. I don't think so, and I think that's a good thing. Um, I think I'm probably the proudest of my Irish because it's an army that is shitty looking from the standpoint of what they actually wore, and I, and I made them look very interesting, at least for myself, and I enjoy playing them because of that. Um, so I am looking forward to doing more shitty armies like that. Um, you know, not because the Irish are shitty or no, not because they play shittily, but they're just peasant looking, you know, and, um, I, that's what I enjoy, you know, uh, I don't need to paint really fancy troops. To make them look 
to make an army shine. I, I would rather paint something that nobody would care about. So, and I've got at least three of those type of armies on my, I hope I get them done in the next three years list. And they're not going to be winning battles. Uh, they're not battle winning armies. And they're not armies that I have seen people really do before um, from a standpoint of, you know, excitement level. But I want to do them because I got such a kick out of doing my Irish. So I'd say my Irish right off the bat. Um, like the Pope army, I, I like the papal army a lot, but it's fancy looking, it's fancier looking guys. And I don't know, there's not much, there's not much of a, as much of an excitement for it. So, but do I have a favorite army? No, I probably don't. I think that's a good thing, you know. I want to, you know, learn about different periods. So the way to do that is to build different armies from them. But I do get a kick out of, of, of using second-rate figures and using, army, uh, using figures and army lists that people don't really care about, you know. So I think documentaries make people look grungier than they probably were. I think documentaries make it look like nobody has any cavalry. <laughs> this, what is that, live-action Dracula movie? And I'm like, oh, cool. I could use that for my... I'm like, nobody's mounted. I'm like, well, you know, it's... Nobody wants to be in a movie, like, charging in other people and getting cut to pieces. So that's a little bit harder to do. Everybody dismounts in combat. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I like my guys look kind of grungy. I don't like seeing these old movies from like the 50s and 60s where everything's happy, hunky dory or, or these people how they used to paint their figures back in the 70s and stuff where they're all bright colors and, and glossy. It's it just not my thing. I mean, not, maybe not grungy, but I definitely like the shadows and stuff on them. Okay, well, it's right after 6.30. I better get a move on or I'm going to be late. And um, But anyways, we should be on the night. Thanks for everybody that came by. And uh, an hour and a half, I don't think that's bad. Maybe tonight I can get this guy done. That's a small goal. And then I'll have two of the three figures done for this one. And, of course, the big, the big push for me to do it tonight is I get to paint a shield. And have it com completely committed to which one it is. I'm pretty sure it's going to have a green background. And, um, but other than that, um, yeah, well, thanks everybody for coming by.